G'day everyone, welcome back to another weekly tipping video on the channel. Today I'm going to be going over my tips for round 6 of the 2024 AFL season. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you do go on to enjoy. And let's start off with my tips from last week. Okay everyone, so my tips from round 5 and I managed to get myself a 5 out of 8, which honestly I'll take given how many upsets there were last round. So a lot of people did hit some poor scores, but at least I was able to get one upset tip correct and that was the Lions on Thursday night. Just felt bullish that they would really kickstart their season with a really big win, just given very talented side and they came out and just completely battered Melbourne around the footy. And then with Friday, thought that August would get this one done, uh, but now they're under the microscope um, of how they're going as a club as Essendon just wanted that game more their pressure and their midfield work just outdid the Bulldogs uh, then for the Saturday games tipped the Giants over the Saints but oof just got that one correct as St Kilda kicked I think the last six goals of the game almost came back and did the impossible Carlton I thought that'd be too good at home in their play pin but Adelaide really resilient win probably one of the best wins under Matty Nick's um, for the Crows, a uh, really easy tip with Gold Coast at home. They're a hard tie to beat home, uh, uh, of course, up there in the Gold Coast against the Hawks. Port Adelaide just got the win over Fremantle in a bit of a cagey affair. Charlie Dixon and Horn Francis, the match winners. Then for the Sunday games, uh, we all thought this would be two easy tips. The Cats, easy over at North Melbourne. But how about this? The West Coast Eagles against an injury raveled Richmond Tigers outfit. They were fantastic in the midfield and they picked up their first win of the season. So, Five out of eight, not the best, but given how many upsets there were, I'll take it. Okay, everyone, now let's have a quick look at my Rolls Maca tipping competition leaderboard update. As I said before, given how hard the round was for tipping, nobody in the comp did get eight out of eight, but we did get two people of the OG Asaya and Jezza. 575 that did get 7 out of 8 as the highest in the comp and as for who is leading the competition at the moment it is Magpies FX with a total score of 57. Okay everyone now let's kick on with our tips for round 6. It's a round full of 50-50 matchups and we start with a 50-50 matchup right here Thursday night footy the Saints hosting the Bulldogs at Marvel Stadium. When looking at this matchup, I just look at it as the strong structure of the Saints versus the talent of the Western Bulldogs, which side does get up. Uh, but at the moment, the Bulldogs are definitely under the pump after their poor showing against the Dons. We saw again from Luke Beveridge some questionable selection calls with Bailey Dale as a sub, not uh, playing Caleb Daniel. And again, just the, the bottom six of that best 22 for the Bulldogs was just no good. And even their stars, you know, Bontempelli had his worst game in quite some time. He was well negated. Uh, they just couldn't really get their ball movement going. And after half time, they just went into their shells. They couldn't move the footy. They were just uh, under the pump of that strong Essendon pressure. So if the Saints want to win this game, they've just got to really show that strong pressure like Essendon were able to last week um, to that Bulldogs back half and put them under the pump. Um, and also, you really want to try and negate the likes of Aaron Norton, Waitmans, and Ewa Hagen's marking inside 50. So the likes of Callum Wilkie and Josh Battle, who I felt have had really good starts to the season for the Saints, if they're able to bring those um, marking contests, bring the footy to ground, and try and get that contested marking game out of the Bulldogs, they're a good chance to win here. Um, but when you look at the Saints, though, they've been very inconsistent with how they've gone. Um, they've been able to play for a quarter some terrible footy where they can't move the ball at all. Um, they just turn it over with a lot of sloppy errors and um, also trying to be too cute when moving it with hand passing it too much. But then for a phase of a game like against Richmond um, and also like against the Giants, they'll just come out with this free-flowing ball movement and just look unstoppable. So they're also a hard team to gauge the Saints. So yeah, it's a really 50-50 one I feel because when we see the best of both sides, if the Bulldogs could get on top of that midfield battle and with that high ten forward line knock over and dismiss on the Saints defence, they could easily win this one. So it's a hard one to go with, but just without to how both these sides are running at the moment, I think throughout all games this season, the Saints have been a lot more competitive than the Bulldogs. They're hard to gauge on the Doggies a little bit more than the Saints. And I just back in the Saints running power um, and their midfield's been in good form too. steele has been very good um, against the head-to-head -head best midfielder. So you'd expect him to maybe go into Bontempelli. No Liberatore as well for the Dogs, which does hurt. And I think in the Ruck battles as well, Marshall could really obliterate English because he's been quite soft too. So... I'm going to be back in the Saints for this one, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me the dogs uh, get up here and play much better footy and bounce back after, yeah, just a, a week hammered um, from the press. So the Saints, I think, though, will be too good for the dogs and win a close one by 12 points. 
For Friday Night Footy now, we return to Adelaide Oval as the Crows do take on the Essendon Footy Club. Both teams offer a really strong win and a resilient win from last week. Adelaide picking up their first W of the season. Um, as I said before, I thought that win um, against Carlton was probably the best under Matty Nix's uh, tenure at the Crows. Uh, they were down as much as 16 points. We all thought it was all game over, but they just came back so strong. Uh, Matty Crouch in the midfield was massive in the last few moments. Sam Berry, the sub-hero, to get the win. And what I liked about Adelaide is they just played with a lot more dare and a lot more pace when moving the footy. As I've said with the Crows, I don't think they have much of an issue when getting it out of, um, of congestion. It's just that how they move the footy and what they do inside 50 has been really letting them down. So I felt they weren't far off and I was bullish on them to really click into gear against the Blues last week. And hey, they knocked off a, a pretty hard to beat Blues side at their playpen of Marvel. So back at home now against the tough side of Essendon though. Um, they've also been um, yeah, a really strong side around the footy. A little bit inconsistent as well. Look what happened against Port Adelaide. But if they bring their strengths to the table uh, and negate the opposition's best mids like they were able to last week against the likes of Libertor and Bontempelli, they can really get on top. The defence for the Dons last week was very strong. Ben McKay's had a really good start to the season. I thought they repelled the Dogs inside 50 so well. So if they're able to do that against the Crows, who are always questionable when going inside 50, they could really get on top of that area. And so I think for the Dons, if they're able to really try and get on top of that midfield, defend well in their defensive 50 and just show that elite pressure like they did against the Dogs, show a bit of that edge, really see them getting on top here. They usually sometimes do play Adelaide over well, uh, but it's hard to see that at the moment after their poor outing against Port Adelaide. But that's probably a bit of an outlier, uh, that performance. I think now you've got to treat them as a bit more of a serious side. Uh, but I just look at Adelaide, they'll gain confidence off the back of that win. The midfield mix was much better for the Crows last week too. Rankin was their highest CBA player. Um, and also Rochelle who's thrown in there a little bit too. And Saligo now playing more as that inside midfielder. They're without Crouch though, who's been really good in extracting the footy. But I think the Crows um, just at home. And um, I think with that home crowd, and off the back of a win, they'll get on top and knock off the Dons here. But I still like Essendon, though. If they can bring their heat, um, they could really get on top. And their fourth half's been in good form, too. Uh, you know, the package has been great. And Harry Jones has been good as that hard-working high half forward. Uh, but I expect Adelaide, though, to get the win over Essendon just because of that home field advantage. So the Crows to knock off the Dons here. And maybe a game that contains a lot of lead changes. Uh, this one could be close. But then Adelaide, I think, will run away with it and win by 15 points. For the Saturday games now, a lot of 50-50s here, and we start off with the Pies hosting Port Adelaide at the MCG. The Pies haven't been too crash hot to kick off their season, but deservedly are the favourites, given that the last two, um, the last time these sides played at this venue, the Pies smacked Port Adelaide by 71 points. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to really predict this game because we could either see Port Adelaide get absolutely thumped uh, by Collingwood, who are a team you still want to respect, though. The Premier is from last year. They do play their best footy at the MCG or Port Adelaide, given they're in really good form. They could come out and, um, you know, beat Collingwood convincingly because the Pies, you know, they started off their own four campaign with not looking great defensively. The intensity around the footy was pretty questionable. And teams usually off the bye aren't too crush hot as well. So maybe Port Adelaide um, get on top of this game. I'm really rating Port Adelaide's season so far. Just their ability to, to get a lot of repeated entries. They are one of the top teams in the comp of keeping it in their forward half. So if they can really put that um, Collingwood defence under quite a bit of duress, uh, and also considering that there are a lot of players in form in their forward half, Charlie Dixon, Geordie Artis, um, of course, Toddy Marshall too. A few of their smalls are getting to work as well, really, Willy Rioli. They've just got so many weapons. It's such a massive game for both teams, of course. I mean, if Collingwood could get up top here, they could really kickstart their season. Though they were able to knock off um, Brisbane with really good pressure and some great ball movement at the Gabba the other week ago. So if they can do somewhat similar to Port Adelaide and put their defence under a bit of fire, um, well, yeah. I think the Pies are a good chance here. They're the favourites. Uh, but I'll just back in Port Adelaide, though. I'm liking them a little bit more than the Pies, and it's hard to sort of um, predict those teams coming off the bye. So I think Port Adelaide, off the back of a really strong win against Fremantle, um, I reckon the power will get on top here and knock off the Pies. So we go Port Adelaide. It's a risky tip, though. This could be really bad. The Pies could easily smack Port here, um, given it's the MCG. But I'm going to be going with Port Adelaide. They're running really well at the moment, so... The pair to knock off the pies by 16 points.
Then for the next game, we do have Carlton hosting the Giants at Marvel Stadium. Uh, Carlton, pretty disappointing uh, loss they had last week. Granted, though, they didn't play the absolute worst. They were just uh, they just lost to a very accurate Adelaide side. I think they kicked something like 14 goals for, whilst they kicked 14 goals, 14 themselves. Uh, but heading into this game, they are going to be without a few of their important 22 players. Uh, Mitch McGovern and Adam Saad are going to be out with hamstring trouble, so that kills a bit of their intercepting and also drive from half back. And also, uh, Adam Chera is still yet to come into the side. He's going to be out for another month, potentially. So um, there's going to be more of an onus on Sam Walsh to try and get on top of that midfield and Paddy Cripps and George Hill to get to work. As for the Giants, no Stephen Cornelio. Thank goodness it's not an ACL. I think it's going to be just a low-grade MCL. And no Sam Taylor after that horror clash uh, last week against the Saints. So, yeah, a, f a few personal issues for both sides here. Both sides haven't been at their absolute peak, I'd say, the last few weeks. The Giants have been able to tick over the wins and have started with a very impressive 5-0 uh, record. But when looking at them defensively, they haven't been the absolute great. And we all know when Carlton are at that playpen of Marvel, they can play some dangerously good footy. So, you know, the Blues could really put on a high score against the Giants here. But also defensively, the Blues have been a little bit questionable too. Um, with that free-flowing uh, Adelaide ball movement last week, they just allowed the Crows to move it way too easily throughout uh, the middle of the park. And they weren't able to deal with a lot of that damage when the ball went inside their defensive 50. can really see this game going either way, but just, I think... With the Giants' ball movement, it's some of the best in the competition. So if they can bring that fast uh, ball movement ability against the Blues uh, with those outs, I'm going to be backing in GWS here. But yeah, it's a hard one to tip. The Blues' slight favourites as it is at Marvel Stadium. But I'll go with GWS here. Uh, both teams have their injury woes, of course. But I reckon the Giants um, will move to 6-0 with this win over Calvin. So... A game that I think could have a couple of lead changes, but the Giants to run away with it and win this one by 13 points. For the Saturday night games, first one up, we have Brisbane hosting the Cats at the Gabba. Geelong, alongside GWS, one of the few remaining undefeated teams in the competition. And yes, a lot of people will say, ah, oh, look at the opponents they've played, yada, 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 which I guess is a reasonable thought, but... You can only beat what's in front of you, and Geelong have looked fantastic as a team that just uh, so strong as a collective unit. You know, the cohesion and chemistry when moving the footy inside 50 is class. Yes, their midfield, probably probably in the long term, uh, could be an issue for them, but they're just getting it done um, in their forward half and also defensively. Uh, behind the footy, they set up so well, and that's going to be important against Brisbane, who love to move the footy really well um, at the Gabba. They're a strong side off clearance and off turnover, usually, um, but what we were able to see last week against Melbourne was great um, from a Brisbane Lions perspective. They brought that elite pressure. I mean, the pressure index, I'm pretty sure, was over 200. So if you're winning that pressure index number or figure or whatever it is, you usually are winning the game. Uh, and they just completely shell-shocked Melbourne. Um, they were defensively much better, and especially their clearance game was impressive. Cam Rayner was fantastic. Lockie Neal was so clean in the cold face. And I just think for Brisbane, they'll gain confidence off that now. And now, can they start to churn that consistency? A very good home and away, uh, home and away side, usually Brisbane, um, and they are a great side at home. I expect them to play um, now much better footy after that win over Melbourne. So I like them for the tip here, but usually let's remember the Cats. They're not an easy side to ride off with the tipping. Uh, Dangerfield, I'm pretty sure, is going to be coming back into the lineup alongside Tom Hawkins. So that really strengthens their side. It's a game of efficiency for me, the Cats. If they can really pick apart their targets inside 50, you know, Grind Mize and Tyson Stengel, uh, Brad Close as well. So many contributing factors on how they put points on the board. I think they really could get on top here uh, against the Lions. But with this game being at home, I know they haven't played the best at the Gabba Brisbane, but just off the back of that really impressive win against Melbourne, I think they'll give them, give them confidence on their ability to play much better footy. So I think the Lions will send the Cats home with their first loss of the season. Brisbane get on top here. And again, that could be going back and forth. The Lions pick up a close win by nine points. Then the other Saturday night game, we have the Eagles hosting the Dockers at Optus Stadium, uh, the Western Derby for the first time this year. And it could be a bit more of an entertaining one from a neutral point of view as West Coast 
coming off a win and a really promising win uh, against Richmond. Where they've actually been much better this year, West Coast, is their ability to win clearance. Uh, we saw it last week, in, oh sorry, sorry, the week before against the Swans, they were able to win a lot of centre clearance and they were able also to win a patch of it against Port Adelaide, for example, and a little bit against the Bulldogs. Uh, and they were much better going inside 52. Uh, a bit more of that free-flowing ball movement we saw. Jake Waterman, I think, had a career best game. And Harley Reid and Elliot Yo were doing the damage in the middle. So it's a good chance to try and show their strengths against Fremantle. Could they win that midfield battle? Um, but looking at the Dockers, one of the top defensive teams in the competition, though. Um, what they've been able to do to the likes of Port Adelaide and Carlton, who are usually you know, really strong scoring sides, and um, they've been able to limit a lot of teams' scoring. I do like the West Coast Eagles here to maybe push Fremantle for a quarter or two and make this game competitive, but I just think when looking at both sides, I'm really liking on how the Dockers are going at the moment. They just limit scoring so well. Yes, they're having issues with putting points on the board themselves, um, but they're a really well-drilled side. The midfield's been great. And even some individuals in their forward 50, like Josh Trace, has been fantastic. So I think they'll um, beat up here on the West Coast Eagles. Could be a close first half, but Fremantle run away this one and win it by 28 points. And just the two Sunday games. First one up, we have the Swans hosting the Suns at the SCG. Sydney coming off the bye, and their previous two matches haven't been the absolute best. Uh, they got beaten by a, a side that just won it more uh, against the Richmond Tigers, and also um, copped a bit of a scare in that first half against the West Coast Eagles. So I guess the weaknesses for the Swans is if an opposition puts a lot of pressure um, on, on the Swans, they struggle to move the footy. So if you can take away Sydney's ball movement and really uh, guard the corridor, they are a beatable side, Sydney. And this is where a side of the Gold Coast Suns could really try and nullify the Swans' strengths. Um, they've been defensively really good the past few weeks. They've been one of the top intercepting sides in the competition. Uh, Mac Andrew and Charlie Ballard and Collins have been fantastic in the air. Um, and they don't allow oppositions to usually get a lot of inside 50s too. So, you know, it's the battle of a pretty good looking informed defense versus a free-flowing ball movement side that can put on a big score of the Swans. The midfield battle is going to be a really interesting one too. Uh, the Gold Coast usually play their really good footy um, against the Swans and if they can get on top of that midfield um, with the likes of Noah Anderson and Tuke Miller and Matt Rao, they've just been in such good form. They could honestly pinch this one, the Suns. Uh, they've been able to do it before in the past. They play really good footy here at the SCG. Um, it is hard to go against the Swans usually though. They've been one of the top scoring sides in the competition and are a side ranked high up there for you know score launches and also inside 50s. So if they can really try, if they could really control, sorry, um, you know that territory battle, I expect the Swans to get it done here. But off the bye, the Swans aren't too crash hot. And as I always say as a Swan supporter, I am as optimistic as I am pessimistic. And given that Gold Coast can be our bunny sometimes, I'm liking the way the Suns are going at the moment. The midfield's looking great. I think defensively they're really sound too. And they've got just damaging um, targets forward of centre. I'm going with the upset tip. I think the Suns get it done here over the Swans. I just think if... The Gold Coast are able to take away the Swans' strengths of ball movement and really pressure their back half. I think that can win this game of footy. So it's one that can hurt me with tipping. I'm given that 4% have tipped Gold Coast, but I'm going with the Suns. I think they can get on top. I like the way they're going at the moment. Gold Coast to win this one. A bit of a cagey affair, but they'll win it in the end, I reckon, by 10 points. Which leaves one of the games of the century on your Sunday twilight, North Melbourne versus Hawthorne. What a comedian I am, I'll shut up now. Uh, but jeez, I mean, looking at this matchup, it's um, not shaping up to be the greatest quality game of football, you think. Uh, both teams sitting at 18th and 17th, and both teams are yet to pick up their first win of the season. So could we see a draw, perhaps? I highly doubt it, though. Uh, but yeah, a lot of issues for both sides. Uh, North Melbourne, yes, their North Bell ball has been their probably only positive highlight alongside a few of the young stars having bright starts to the season, like Harry Sheasel. And, you know, Cherry's been battling hard, too. Uh, but just defensively, they are a, a, an absolute mess at the moment. They're just a team that gets killed off turnover. And that's also the same for the Hawks, too. Uh, defensively, they haven't been at their absolute peak, too. Uh, Sicily's not been uh, playing his absolute best football. Um, their leaders aren't really helping out those young players out there at the moment. And their midfield is just getting eaten alive, too. You know, we all thought John Newcomb and Warple, he's had some few good individual games. But look what happened against Gold Coast last week. They just got absolutely tortured in that midfield battle. So... 
It's hard to see who could really get on top here. Um, you know, I could really see both sides winning this game. Um, you know, Ford of Center, the Hawks have those talented names, but just they've had a lot of chemistry and cohesion issues when going inside 50. Um, and as for the Kangas, they've just been so poor moving out of their back half. A lot of unforced turnovers and a lot of poor foot skills. It's a hard one to see who gets on top here, but just because of the better side on paper, I'll just go with the Hawks. It's just a, it's just a re really... Um, you know, a tip up in the air. I don't know really who could get on top here, but just because I think they're a better side on paper, the Hawks, and they've got a bit more talent forward of centre, um, and they're, they're a side that uh, has a bit more higher expectations heading into this year too. I'll go with the Hawks. Um, you know, both sides are talented, and the good will come eventually. And looking at Hawks last year, they start off the season very poorly, and now able to get their first win, I'm pretty sure, against the Kangas. So I think the same will happen against North Melbourne here. And the Hawks to win this one by, could be a couple of lead changes, could be close, but I reckon Hawthorne run away with it and win by 22 points. So over on there were my tips for round six of the 2024 AFL season. Just the eight games again this week uh, with Melbourne and Richmond having the bye. Um, let me know what your tips are down below in the comments as I love to hear your people's opinions. A lot of 50-50 games as well, so hopefully I can go well in the tipping this week. Thanks very much for watching, and until next time, I will talk to you later. See you later, fellas.